When you start a geometry class, one of the first things that you learn about are points, lines, and planes, as well as some other uh, geometry terms. And so what we're going to talk about in this first lesson here is how to do the notation properly. And we're going to do 20 questions related to this diagram. So if you want, go ahead and try and pause the video. Actually take out a piece of paper and pencil and see if you can actually write down the answers to these problems as we go through and we'll go through them together. So 20 questions, let's dive into the first question. It says name three points. Okay, so when you look at this diagram, you say, well, what is a point? A point is basically a location in space and it's infinitesimally small, but it's represented by one of these capital letters, okay? Now these letters over here that are in the corners of these uh, parallelogram type shapes, these are planes. This refers to the name of the plane. But if you see a dot and a capital letter next to it, that's referring to a point. So there's a lot of correct answers here. Uh, I might say like point T, comma, point R, comma, point X. Those would all be points in the plane. Another key about points is that they're zero dimensional. So a uh, point is zero dimensional, a line is one dimensional, a plane is like 2D or two dimensional, and then of course space is like three dimensional. So let's look at the next question. It says name two lines. So do you see two lines in the diagram? And how would you label those lines? Well, a line, you know, it keeps going in both directions. You learned this in algebra, right? So it's actually like an infinite number, uh, infinite number of points. So for example, like I could see this line right here, and I can label it a few different ways. Like I can label it as line L. That's one option, okay, with this capital letter C at the very end, or I'm sorry, this cursive letter. Or what I can do is I can pick two points on the line. So for example, maybe let's say this line right here, I could say line XV, and I put that line symbol above it to indicate that it's a line and not a segment or a ray or um, you know, the distance between X and V. So a lot of correct answers there. Uh, let's take a look at number three now. It says name two segments. Now a segment is like a section of a line. It has two endpoints and it's just like a piece of that line. So for example, I could say uh, UV, just that little segment right there, and I would just put a little bar over here to indicate that U is an endpoint, V is an endpoint, it starts at U, ends at V. What's another segment here? We could do VZ, that's another possibility. Again, I put that segment bar above it to indicate that it's a segment, not a line, array, etc. One quick note about this diagram. Sometimes when students look at this, their eyes go a little bit wonky. Uh, when you see the dash or dotted uh, pieces, that means like you're looking through, almost like a piece of glass or something that's semi-transparent. And you can see that this kind of continues, this line here. Same thing here, like you see this line, it kind of disappears because, and then it reappears here because it indicates that it's going through this plane here. So that's what the dashes mean, or the dots. And with a plane, you know, a plane, it actually keeps going forever and ever in, in both directions. You know, it's like, like a flat wall or sheet of paper or ceiling or floor or something like that. It just continues to go in, in both directions forever. Let's go to number four now. It says, are points T, R, and U collinear? <clears throat> now, sometimes when I'm doing these problems, I tell students to kind of look closely at the words. It'll tell you what it means. Co means same. Linear means line. So do you, are points T, R, and U on the same line? Let's see, T, R, U. Well, at first glance, you might think, well, oh, there could be a line that goes through T, R, and U. They look like they're in a straight line. But the only way that we can say that for sure that they're collinear is if there is a line drawn through those points. So we really can't jump to that conclusion. So I'm gonna say no for this one. Okay, can't make that conclusion. Number five, our points X, V, and U coplanar. So co again means same. Planar means in the same plane or flat surface. So what do you think on that one? Are X, V, and U coplanar? Yes, it looks like they're here in this plane D, this flat horizontal plane. So I'm gonna say yes on this one. For number six, it says name three collinear points. So do you see three points that are on the same line? There's a couple possibilities here. We could do uh, R, V, and Z. That would be one possibility. And you could also do X, V, and W. Um, you know, so there's a couple different options there. For number seven, it says give another name for plane D. So plane D, that's this flat surface right here. The key when you name a plane is you want to pick three points that are 
not in a straight line. Why not in a straight line? Because if they're in a straight line, say like R, V, and Z, there could be like a flat surface that goes through these three points like this, or on an angle, or another angle. But when you pick three points that are not in a straight line, there's only one flat surface that will intersect or go through those three points. So another name for plane D, D here, I could do W, U, V. And what, the way you would write it is you write plane, capital letters, W, U, V. Now some students will <clears throat> mistakenly say like, oh, W, U, X, V. They might use four points. You just want to pick three. So there's more than one way to name this plane. I could have done plane X, V, U. I just couldn't do plane X, V, W because these three points are in a straight line. And there's more than one plane that goes through those three uh, collinear points. For number eight now, it says give another name for plane C. So here's plane C, this like vertical plane here. What do you think for that one? Well, this one, let's see, I'm gonna say plane, and I'm gonna pick three points that are not in a straight line. Let's say maybe R, U, and V. Okay, those are in the plane and they're not collinear. That's one option, but there's others. You could say plane V, R, T, that's another one, or Z, R, T. Uh, for number nine, it says name the intersection of plane C and plane D. So when we talk about intersection, it's like where they cross. So with lines, they cross at a point, okay? And planes, like flat surfaces, they cross at a line. Kind of like if you look at the wall and the floor, you'll see a line where they're, uh, you know, where they join there, where they cross. So in this case, where do the two flat surfaces, these two planes cross? It's going to be at this line right here. I'm going to call it line M. So let's see uh, here, line M. Or you could say line VU and put the line symbol above it. There's a couple ways to write that. Now for number 10, it says name the intersection of line RB and line XW. So where is RB? RB is this vertical line right here. XW is this line right here. And it looks like they're crossing right at point V. So I'm just going to say, uh, you could just say V, capital letter V, or you could say point V. So let me erase the whiteboard here and let's do the next 10 questions. Okay, see if you can do this next group of problems. So for number 11, it says name two pairs of opposite rays. So in the diagram, two pairs of opposite rays. Well, when you think of opposite rays, you wanna make sure they're going 180 degrees opposite, like they form a line. And you wanna make sure they have that same endpoint. They call it an endpoint, but in a way, you can think of it as like the starting point, And then they go opposite directions, 180 degrees. So here I could say uh, ray, let's see, VW and ray VX. And the way that you would write this, VW and VX, but notice that ray VX goes to the left, but the notation is that you still write the arrow pointing to the right. That's just the uh, accepted way of doing it. Again, V is the starting point. It's heading towards X and then it keeps going, right? This one starts at V, it goes towards W, it keeps going. So that's uh, a pair of opposite rays. Another pair would be VR and VZ. So let's maybe write that one down. So VR and VZ. Okay, for the next one, number 12, it says name a point that's coplanar with U, V, and V. So again, remember, co means same, planar means plane. So do you see some points that are in the same plane as U, V, and V? Well, U, V, and V are in this vertical plane, plane C, and another point that would be in that same plane, you could say Z or R or T. So any of those would, would work. So let's just write Z, R, or T. For number 13, can you name a point that's not coplanar with U, V, and V? So U, V, and V, again, that's plane C, not in that same flat surface, would have to be something like X or W. So a couple options there. Uh, for number 14, give two other names for line RB. So here's this line RB. Another name was, you could use this capital at, uh, letter here. Not, I keep saying capital, it's the uh, cursive letter. So line L. Or we could call it BR. You could actually change the order of the two points. Or we could do BZ. Any two points on the line uh, will work. And then just make sure you draw that line symbol above it to indicate it's a line and not a segment. For number 15, it says, give two other names for line M. Okay, so here's line M. So we could do UV 
or we could do VU, again, drawing that line symbol above it to indicate it's a line. For number 16, give another name for ray RV. Okay, so notice that it's starting at R, that's our endpoint. It's heading towards V, it keeps going. So to have another name for this ray, it would still have to start at point R, and maybe we could do Z or B. So it could be RZ, or it could be RB. You've got a few different options there. Number 17 are ray BZ and ray VZ opposite rays. Well, without even looking at the diagram, I can see that they don't have the same starting point. It's called you know, the end point. They would have to have that same end point. So right away, without even looking at the diagram, I can see, no, they're not opposite rays. But if I look at the diagram, uh, BZ is going this way, VZ is going this way. A lot of students will say, yeah, one's going up, one's going down, they're opposite. But again, it's kind of like you're talking to a friend in the hall, right? And your friend says, I have to go to class this way, you have to go to class this way. You're starting at that same point, again, which is the end point, but you're going 180 degrees opposite. These ones, they don't have the same end point, like the starting point. So let's say no for this one. For number 18, uh, name the intersection of plane D and line M. So plane D is this horizontal plane. Line M is this line right here. But you know what's interesting is that this line M and plane D, like the line M lies in the plane. Essentially, like imagine if my hand is like a, a plane or a flat surface and I put that line right in the plane, all the points on the line are intersecting with, with the plane. So the intersection is the entire line. So it's just going to be line M. And for number 19, name the intersection of plane C and line XW. So plane C is this vertical plane. XW is this line right here. And you can see that they're crossing right at point V. So it's almost like uh, here is a plane and then the line is going through the plane like that and it's just crossing at one point. And for number 20, uh, true or false, plane C and plane D are perpendicular. Now remember, perpendicular means like at a right angle to one another. Do you think that's true? Well, it does look like they form a right angle, but in order for us to know that it's a right angle, we'd have to have some kind of indication that uh, you'd see like a little box here, a little square to indicate that it's at a right angle. We don't have that here. We can't jump to that conclusion. So in this case, we're going to say that that's a false conclusion. So great job if you're able to follow this introductory lesson, oftentimes the first lesson in geometry. I have a geometry course on my membership page, on my Mars Math Tutor and YouTube channel membership page at the additional videos level. So if you like the way that I teach and you want to learn more about geometry with me, I recommend that you sign up as uh, an additional videos member and you can get access to not just my geometry course, but uh, pre-calculus uh, course and Algebra 2 and uh, Algebra 1, as well as midterm and final exam reviews and more. So I'll see you over in that membership site. I'll also put another video over here if you want to learn more about this topic.